Have you ever had seed that's really difficult to germinate? Maybe it requires a lot of cold, warm cycles, or maybe it just takes a long time to germinate. Well, one thing that's worth trying is gibberellic acid, and that's what this video is all about. I'm going to tell you what gibberellic acid is. I'm going to give you some examples of how I have used it to speed up seed germination, and then I'll show you exactly how to use it for yourself. Gibberellins are a group of compounds. There's about a hundred different ones, and they're all plant hormones. They control a lot of things that have to do with rooting and flowering and making seed. But the thing we're most interested in here is how it affects the germination of seed. And the hormone we're talking about here is called gibberellic acid, or GA3 for short. Why are some seeds so difficult to germinate? Well, seeds naturally go into a dormant stage. Some seeds have a very light dormancy, and as long as you give them some water, they're going to germinate right away. Other seeds require different temperature changes to make them germinate. This is particularly true of some seed once it's dried out. So fresh seed might germinate fairly easily, but once it's good and dry and has been sitting on the shelf for several months, it might be much more difficult to germinate that seed. There are a number of ways that you can use to overcome the dormancy, and I've made a separate video about that, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this one. Today what we're going to talk about is using a hormone to overcome dormancy. What I found is that GA3 can speed up the germination, and in some cases it actually increases the percent of germination that takes place. But there are some downsides. If you use too much of the hormone, it will kill the seed. So the concentration you use is critical. The other thing that happens is if you use a little bit too much GA3, you'll get tall, spindly seedlings. And they're very weak, and many of them will end up dying. So rule number one with GA3 is if the seed germinates without it, don't use it. It's much easier not to use it. But if you have some really tough seed, it is worth a consideration. So I've tried GA3 in a number of different seeds, and here's some of my experiences. Most of the common columbines, aquilegia, are fairly easy to germinate, but some of them are quite difficult. And I found that particularly the smaller rock garden types can be difficult to germinate. I have had some trouble with Aquilegia flabellata that I got from a seed exchange, and I think the seeds were just too old. In that case, gibberellic acid will help. Once I had my own plants, I could collect fresh seed, and I found that if I planted the seed right away, I had germination within two or three weeks. But if I left that seed sitting, so it dried for two or three months, then I had difficulty germinating it. A GA3 treatment dramatically increased the speed of germination. I also found the same thing for Aquilegia canadensis. And soaking that seed at 500 parts per million for 24 hours made a huge difference on the germination. The other plant where I've had great success with GA3 is Glossidium palmatum, the Japanese wood poppy. I've received seed for this plant from the Ontario Rock Garden and Hardy Plant Society a couple of times. And I've had some success germinating them, and in other cases, I didn't have success. So I started using GA3 on this, and it makes a huge difference. Seeds treated with GA3 started germinating one week after treatment and continued for a couple of months. The percent germination was almost 100%. When I used the same seed and didn't treat it, germination took at least two months, and the percent germination was down to about 50%. In my experience, none of the treated seeds had any kind of deformities, and they all grew very well. I've also tried gibberellic acid on the Himalayan mayapple. Now, these seeds are fairly difficult to germinate, and they usually require one or more cold, warm cycles. When the seed does finally germinate, it only produces a radical. And in some cases, it will also develop the cotyledon leaves, but they can be trapped inside the seed. Then it requires another cold cycle before the seedling makes the first true leaf. What this means is that it usually takes two to three years before you see the first true leaf. 
and that's just too long. When I take dried seed and treat it with GA3, I find that germination starts in about two weeks, and some of the seed does take a few weeks after that to finally show themselves. Untreated seed won't germinate for several weeks and can take many months. What's interesting about this seed is that if it's treated with GA3, it does start making the true leaf soon after germinating. Without the treatment, even if you do get germination, the true leaf won't show until you get another cold cycle. But you can overcome that by treating the seedling with GA3, even after it's germinated. In fact, I've had some seedlings that had the cotyledon leaf stuck inside the seed and it's holding the seed above the ground. And I just put a couple drops of GA3 right on that seed. And within a couple weeks, the true leaf starts showing up. So left to their own devices, this seed can take two to three years before you see the first true leaf. With GA3, we speed up that process and you'll have true leaves after the first year. I also tested GA3 for clematis seed and found that in most cases it really had no effect on germination. But I did see an improvement in germination for clematis pitcheri and virginiana. So when should you use GA3? Well, if you know that you've had trouble with a certain species of seed in the past and you had difficulty germinating it, that species is a good candidate for GA3. I would suggest you take that type of seed and split it into two batches. Treat one and do the other one without the treatment because some seed is just going to get killed with GA3 and you don't want to lose all the seed. Now, the other thing I do when I'm germinating seed is I always look them up in the Ontario Rock Garden and Hardy Plant Society germination guide. And I find that that's the best guide that's online for telling you how to germinate seeds. And if the instructions for that suggest that GA3 is a good candidate, then I would definitely give it a try. The other place I get a lot of my germination information is, a, is from three books written by Dr. Dino. He went through and tested thousands of different species to determine the best way to germinate them. And that information is invaluable. And you can get free copies of those books on my website, gardenfundamentals.com. All right, so let's say you've decided to use some GA3. How do you actually go about using it? Well, you have to be careful of the concentration. A lot of seed is germinated with 1,000 parts per million concentration. Other people dilute that down to 500 or even 250. And you have to experiment a little bit, but it seems like the 1,000 value works for many seeds. Now, where do you get the GA3? Well, it is available from the Ontario Rock Garden Society, and it is also available online. And I'll put some links to those sites down in the description below. I'll also include a link to Dr. Dino's books. Now, the concentration of GA3 that you use is important, but the exposure time is also important. So as a general rule, we gently treat the seed for 24 hours and then we take the seed out of the GA3 and plant them up normally. Or in my case, I take a lot of that seed and use my baggie method for germinating. them. Don't treat the seed for more than 24 hours because if you do that, you can harm the seed. How do you actually treat the seed? There are two common methods. One is that you can make up solutions and then you simply put the seed in the liquid, let them sit for 24 hours and take them out. And I'll go through that method in detail. The second method is the one I use, and I've seen it written up for the first time in Dr. Dino's books. It's a simple little method. It doesn't require you to weigh out any GA3. It is approximate, but it's easy for the homeowner to do. And I think that if you're only treating a couple types of seed, it's probably the better option. If you're trying to germinate a lot of different plants, then it's easier to make up the solution. So here are the two methods. So let's prepare a solution of GA3. The best way to do this is to prepare a stock solution of 1,000 parts per million. To do this, take 10 milligrams of GA3 and 10 milliliters of water. Mix them together and that's your stock solution. Now kitchen measuring devices aren't that accurate, so it might be best to use some lab glassware for this. The other issue you have is weighing out the GA3. Now if you don't have a balance to do this, there are a couple of options. You can buy GA3 in smaller quantities 
and use the whole packet to make up your solution. If the packet contains too much, you can take the contents of the package and put it on a dark cardboard sheet. Now visually split it into two equal piles. So now you've cut that amount in half. If you want even a smaller amount, cut it in half again. If you want even less GA3, take one of those piles and split that in half. And now you've got one quarter of the amount that was in the original package. You can continue doing this to get whatever quantity you need to make up the solution. Now GA3 doesn't dissolve well in water. So here's a little trick you can use. Add some of the water to your container, add the GA3, and then add a few drops of rubbing alcohol. GA3 dissolves quite easily in alcohol. So now swirl it around or mix the container until all of the GA3 is dissolved. You can use that solution as is to get your 1000 ppm, or you can dilute it further and make up a 500 ppm solution as well. You would do that by mixing 10 mils of your stock solution with 10 mils of water. Now one of the issues of making up a stock solution is that the GA3 doesn't last as long once it's dissolved as it does as a dry powder. As a dry powder, it's very stable. And if you keep it in your freezer, it will last for many, many years. But once you've dissolved it up, it's going to have a shorter life. And it's not clear to me how long that solution can be used. But based on the references I've seen, you're probably good for four years provided you store it in the dark and in the fridge. Now let me show you a method that does not require you to weigh out any GA3. Take some paper towel and cut it into a rectangular shape like this. And this should be 2.5 inches by 4.5 inches. I like to use shop towels because they're a little stronger, but if you're just doing a few of these, any good quality kitchen towel will work. Fold it in half, and fold it in half again. So unfold it, and take your seed and put it in here. Now get yourself a toothpick. And the one that's recommended is the one that's pointed at both ends. Take your gibberellic acid. Take the toothpick and dip it in the powder. And a certain amount of powder will be stuck on the end of the toothpick. And just tap that onto the paper towel. Now fold it up and wet it down. You want to add just enough water to make it wet. You don't want any water dripping out of this. Now what I do is take a baggie, and I've got them numbered one, two, three, so I can do three of these in one bag. Because you don't want this drying out. We want the seeds to sit in here for 24 hours. So I take this, put it in slot number two, and I record what kind of seed I put in place number two. I have tried writing on these paper towels, but I find that the ink just smudges or the pencil comes off, and I find this works just as well. Seal up the bag, let it sit at room temperature. 24 hours later, bring it out, open it up, and plant these seeds. Now you can put them directly into your seeding mix, or what I do is I just take the seed off and use my baggie method for germinating the seeds. That's really all there is to it. 
In fact, what I do is I keep this bag around and I reuse these several times until they develop too much mold and then I throw them out and make new ones. The nice thing about this method is that I don't have to weigh out any GA3. I don't have to bother making up solutions. I don't have to worry about how stable those solutions are. And I can do just one small seed here if I want. Gibberellic acid works well for certain types of seed. It is a little extra work, but it can save you weeks or months trying to germinate some seeds. So I hope you give it a try. If you want to learn more about germinating seeds, I have a whole library of videos for doing that. And I'll put a link to that in the top right hand corner. Have fun with your seeds this winter.